Hey guys, it's May May, and it is time for our final part of the plastic photo sleeve album. This is the finished album. I'm not going to flip through it now. You'll be able to see everything that I added. I added several things throughout here. Um, we're going to run through, show you what I did, and at the end of the video, we'll do a full walkthrough of every page. So I wanted to use one of these lockets. We've had these for a while and I haven't got to play with them. And I thought this would be cute to kind of hang off the edge of the album. But I didn't like the glass in it because of my girls. I'm sending this to my granddaughters. And I thought, I'm just going to remove that glass and just let it be open. So I took the glass out, put it aside. You can use it for something else. And I considered using stickers in here. But as I got to play around, I remembered I had all those little ephemera pieces. And I was like, these will be perfect. So I'm going to cover the background of this little locket and then dig into the ephemera. So digging through the ephemera, I wanted to find something that I could just use one image of and not have to layer inside the little locket. That locket's only about an inch wide, so you don't have a whole lot of space. But I'd seen on the little packaging that there was a coffee cup, which is now staring me right there in the face. I'll get to it in a minute. But there's a little coffee cup, and I thought that would be so cute in there because Sam is a coffee lover. And also, who doesn't love a warm drink in the, in the fall and winter? So I choose the little cup, and that's what we're going to put inside. To glue down the background piece, I decided to use some Fabri-Tac. I've been having a really good result with the Fabri-Tac with metal and with some of my buttons and charms. So I decided to go ahead and use it again here. It doesn't take very long to dry either. So what I decided to do is just put the Fabri-Tac inside the charm and then place the little cardstock on it. Once I have the cardstock down, I can use traditional glue from there on out. But metal to cardstock, I wanted to make sure it really held in place well. So that's what I did. For the little cup, I just decided to pop it up on some foam squares. But I wanted it to stay, so I used a lot of foam squares, more than I normally would, to make sure every part of the cup was touching. And that's how simple this little locket assembly was. Look how stinking cute that is. It fits in there perfect. Then close the little locket over and... Put it aside and we come back to it later because I'm not exactly sure where it's going to live, but I know I wanted the locket somewhere on the, on the project. So for this part of the project, I decided I wanted a tassel and I went out to Pinterest and found one that I thought was really kind of cool and I'm trying to kind of mimic it. So I took about eight or nine strands of orange and white baker's twine and I didn't know how long I really needed them to be. So I gave myself a pretty good bit of extra. Those are about 15 inches long. And you'll see me here with all those strands, I'm going to fold them in half and then cut them in half again because I want this to be a pretty full little tassel. And then you'll notice I'm going to fold them one more time. And this is where I decide this is thick enough for my tassel. This is the length I'm going to start with. And I had one extra piece that I, saw, that I decided just to tie at the top. Now, here's the thing. I need extra string at the top because I want to add beads to that coming up soon. And I tie this on. And as I'm tying it, I realize that baker's twine is pretty thick. So you'll notice I'm just leaving myself one long strand of the baker's twine. That's what I'm going to put the beads on. If you try to put two strands through the beads, it's just too thick and you can't get it through. So I'm going to cut the shorter tail off. And then we get to do the fun stuff. We get to add the beads. I tend to add glue to my knots. And the reason is because I find that they don't come unraveled later. And so you'll see me do that a lot through this album. Anywhere I have a bow or a knot or anything, I just kind of feed some glue into it to hold it still. Now, this is where I love my bead threader, and we're using it for what it's actually supposed to be used for. These beads are from one of our collection packs. I've realized that if you go through your stash, you're going to find something to match things that you're doing. And that's what I did here. These are kind of cool. They're multifaceted, kind of cream colored, but they really do look pretty on this little tassel. So I'm putting three of those beads at the top, which is kind of what I saw on Pinterest, how a lot of the tassels were looking. And we leave that one strand out at the top, which I decide to go ahead and tie a loop on here. But I will tell you, I think if you're doing this too, don't tie this yet because I ended up having to do a little bit of fancy footwork to put it into onto the album. It's not a big deal. It turned out working okay, but had I left this untied, I could have tied it in place and it would have been better. But you'll see here, I tie this little knot kind of close to the beads. I'm going to apply glue. And what I like to do is take the nozzle and squish it up into the knot and squeeze the glue in there. Almost like you're like using a pastry bag into like a cream puff. You're filling that um, area with the glue and that keeps it nice and tight. Then I still want this to look like a tassel. So instead of just the baker's twine hanging there, I go to my twine 
and I get out a piece of the brown and I decide to wrap it really tight right here and several, several times. And I really like how this turns out. It, um, it's a neat contrast to the orange to add the brown. So I'm just going to wrap this as many times. Look, you wrap it as many times as you want. I think I did about a quarter to a half inch wide um, area of the twine. And I really like how that turned out. You notice that I'm pulling it pretty tight. I'm kind of stopping and, and stretching it. The reason is I want it to have that tassel shape where it feels like the um, little puff at the top is bigger than right here where we're working. So I pull it really tight to get that shape. And then I'm just going to tie this together right here in a knot. And I want to leave tails because I knew I was going to add something to it, but I didn't know exactly what. But you'll see here, I'm going to give myself some extra length on the twine, and then I'm just going to tie this knot right here to hold it in place until I come back to it. So this is where I decide what do I want to put there. I'm like, I have all these little buttons that are so stinking cute, and I love, love, love them. And I wasn't sure which one I wanted, but I decided that the candy corn didn't match as well as that sunflower. I feel like that sunflower goes with this fall theme really, really good. And I thought about using the leaves later. Spoiler alert, I end up not using the leaves, but I do use this little sunflower, and I love it. The sunflower that I decide to use is not actually a button. It's actually a charm. And Buttons Galore sells these little shanks that you can add to charms. So I went into my stash and I grabbed out one of the clear shanks and I'm going to glue it onto the back to make this a button. That way I can put it onto the tassel. So here again, I used the Fabri-Tac and it worked perfect. I will tell you that I was filming this whole process during our online event this week. So I'd have to film in kind of spurts. So what I was doing is kind of getting things prepped and coming back to them later. So I applied this glue and I put this little shank into the glue and I just sat this aside to dry for 24 hours. And that seemed to be perfect. It, when I came back, it was nice and sturdy and I'll show you that as well. So what I'm going to do with these little guys is I'm going to fussy cut out my granddaughters, <laughs> fussy cut Addie, fussy cut Emmy, and then I'm going to use them in those little two by two pockets. I want to create kind of a shaker element. It's not really going to be shaker, but I wanted something three dimensional that I thought the girls would kind of be like, that's so cool. Look at this. And Addie's so into photo albums right now and scrapbooking that she's really starting to appreciate some of this, you know, like Kids don't always understand it, but she's kind of getting it. And I thought she's going to like seeing this little element and maybe it will inspire her to do the same on something that she's doing on an album or something. So I'm going to fussy cut them both out and I'll show you where they go. So on my fussy cutting, you'll notice that I left a little bit of the white cardstock at the bottom. I wasn't sure how tall they needed to be in the pocket, so I didn't want to cut them so they were too short. So I left that little white there because I can edit it as I go. And you see that Addie fits perfect. I'm going to try Emmy here, but I think Emmy was a little bit long. Yeah, I end up cutting that white strip off of hers because I actually need to get her a little bit um, shorter so that I can sew above her head. Now, sewing. Why did I decide to sew? I think it's neat. I thought it would be a cool extra added kind of texture element and it also puts my love of sewing into the book as well and I've seen other people do it and I thought this is kind of cool let's try it so I get the girls pictures in there and then I'm going to use some of the sprinklets also from buttons galore and these are the sunflower ones I thought it'd be cool to bring the sunflower from the tassel into the project too and so I'm going to use my Cricut spatula for this if you have a spoon or a scoop or something like that, do that. I just didn't want to have to go find my little scoop spatula. So I grabbed my flat spatula from Cricut and I'm going to scoop some of those out onto the spatula and then into the pictures or into the slots where the girls are, I'm going to drop those in. Now I drop them in kind of on top of their photo and then afterwards I just pulled their little picture out and nestled them inside because I do want it to look like they're kind of standing in a field of sunflowers. Just, you know, in my mind, I thought that's what it would look like. And I think it turns out really cute. But again, this is where we have to sew because I don't want any of those pieces to fall out. So I get Addie and Emmy both tucked into their little bed of sunflowers. And then I go, hmm, this needs a baby James. So we also add baby James and then we'll go to the sewing machine. So I decided to bring one of my sewing machines to work. This machine I'm using is a Singer HD machine. I bought it early on in my sewing and I realized quickly it is not what I want for quilting. It's a heavy duty machine, so it's really meant for denims and things like that. And I thought this would be perfect for crafting, for sewing on paper and things. So that's what I do. I put this into my sewing machine and I just do a straight stitch. You could zigzag, you could do all kinds of stuff. I do a straight stitch 
and I decide that I'm going to do two rows of stitches. So I do the one and then I take that out, cut it off, flip it around and do one more row of stitches because I thought two would be better than one just in case some of the threads start to get loose and come out. But I'll also show you in a second another way I decide to um, secure those threads and it really worked out well. So originally I had thought I would just tie the strings and that would keep them safe, but I realized the way I stitched it, my strings kind of landed in different places than I thought they would. In the future when I do this, I think what I'll do is stitch one line go in one way and then one line go in the other so I can have strings on both ends. But as I was trimming these off, I thought, you know what, if I treat this kind of, if I kind of treat these strings with something like a fray check situation, which is a um, product that keeps ribbon from fraying, then I can keep these steel. So I go through and I give all of these lines a little haircut and get all of them cut super close, but I don't let any pull out of the plastic. Then I decide to take my glossy accents and just on the threads, I just kind of paint it onto the threads. And as that dries, it will go super clear and it also has a shine to it. So you won't notice it on the plastic and it'll lock those threads into place. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like sealing them in. I, I thought about using art glitter glue, but the problem is it dries matte and on this plastic you would really see it. And I personally think that the glossy accents work perfect. So try that for, um, for yours. Or like I said, let your strings hang off both ends so you can tie both ends securely and you'll be fine. And again, this is another place where I did the glossy accents. I did it front and back and then I sat this aside and let it dry overnight and I came back to it the next day. Now it's time to tie our little button on and you can see that that shank has dried really, really well. And when I tie this button, there is a trick I want to tell you. I decide to put one strand through one side of the shank. You'll see me do that. Then I take another strand and put it the opposite, going the opposite way. That way I could wrap this around the tassel and get it to lay flat. Well, when I pull this down, I notice that my button is landing on my brown twine and it's not laying flat. So what I do is I kind of wiggle it down into the twine, into the uh, baker's twine. You see, I kind of bury that shank in there. Then when I wrap the twine, I just make sure I wrap it low and that worked perfect. So then just tied the knot in the back and my little sunflower charm was all secured. I'm going to trim that excess twine off and you'll see me again. I add glue to this knot. It's just a, it's just a quick fail safe way to make sure that knot doesn't come untied. So it's time to give this tassel a haircut. You see all the ends there at the bottom. What I wanted to do was take advantage of all the length that I could because it did kind of wiggle around as I was building this. So I go to, I let the shortest strand be my guide. So I'll wad that up in my hand and letting the shortest strand tell me where to cut, just cut straight across. Then you'll notice that it's not super straight, that the way I was holding it, my thumb was kind of distorting the twine. So I ended up having to trim a little more off. And you may have to do that too, like when you lay it down and kind of look at it, but no big deal. And once you get that done, your tassel is ready to use. Now for where the tassel is going to live. At first, I wanted the tassel to be onto one of the little binding rings I'm going to use to bind the book, but then I decided I wanted to use all the length of the tassel, so I'm going to install it in a little bit of a different way, and I'll show you that in just a second. I also was trying to decide where this little locket was going to live. I had thought about putting that loop through it and let it hang there, but I didn't like the way that was going to be kind of stiff, so we come back to that in just a second. But this is where I decided I wanted to close this locket permanently so it couldn't be open. There's no need to open it because I took the glass out anyway. So I put a little bit of glue on the edges of the metal. Not a whole lot. I don't want it to seep out. I just run that down a bit. And then when I close the locket, I decided to put some glue inside the little um, kind of holder where the little bar goes down into. And that really secures it nice and tight. 
Now for the fun part. I have to pick one of these eyelets. These are the We Are Memory Keeper eyelets that you poke a hole into something. Then you put the little eyelet or it's a grommet or an eyelet. You put that inside there and then you squeeze it down and it protects the circle that you punched. I decided since I was going to be adding this um, punch circle where it wasn't originally manufactured, I might need to support it. Then after the fact, I realized it's the same thing. Those holes are just punched in the plastic. And so you saw Shannon's hand. She was helping me pick colors. Um, so I just go ahead and poke the hole and put this in. But I'm like, you know what? I totally didn't have to do the grommet. Or I could have added the grommets to all of the holes. It's up to you which way you want to go with that. I decided to go with the orange. Originally, I wanted to do a different color, but it really looks good. So that's when we're going to use it. So using my crocodile, one thing I like to do is check the size to make sure I'm using the right hole punch. And what you can do is you can take the eyelet and kind of drop it into the little hole and make sure it's the right one. It just slots right into the hole you're going to use. And sure enough, that was the right one. So I'm going to poke the hole there at the top, apply my eyelet, and then squeeze it shut. And I've learned a trick, you guys. The slower you squeeze this, the better result you get. When you put it in and you just kind of squeeze super fast and really hard, it can kind of split the backer. But if you just kind of go slow and easy, you get a much better um, wraparound on the back. I like that much better. All right, it's time for the tassel. So what I end up doing here is tying it on with some ribbon. I wanted ribbon anyway. Um, and I didn't know exactly where I was going to use it, and I decided to tie this on with a bow. So I'm going to use that yellow and brown ribbon. I'm going to pull it through the hole and then put the tassel on and tie it. Then I'll do that same glue trick to lock it into place. Now for my little metal locket. So I never was sure exactly how I wanted it to go, but I wanted it to live kind of high and kind of have its own movement. I didn't want it locked in very stiff. So I decided to take some brown baker's twine or um, hemp twine and tie it around the bow. And I tied it super, super snug so it's not going to go anywhere. And I used the bow knot to my advantage. So when I take that twine around, I'm going to pull it snug and tie a couple of knots up there, leaving me some extra string to apply the locket to afterwards. So with that knot tied, I just put the little twine through the locket and do a loop down here, a little knot, just where I want it. I kind of lay it where I want it to be and just do that little knot. No stress, just very carefully. Um, you can do this a hundred different ways. And since I'm kind of doing it after the fact, this is where I ended up doing it. Trim off those extras. I'm going to apply a little glue to that knot and it's perfectly fine. It's ready to go. So let's talk about finishing, putting all my pages in and how I'm going to bind it. I want to send them some blank pages so they can add to it because as you can see, I filled this up pretty good. I'm actually going to send them the leftover paper that I have, the cardstock from the collection, so that they will have the same cardstock. Although. I know my granddaughters and they are not picky about if things match, okay? They just enjoy doing it and they have that childlike artistic ability where they don't have to stress about things, which some of us don't have anymore and sometimes don't need. But they will play no matter what um, paper or photos they have. But I'm going to send them one extra of each style of page in here. So they'll have that. And I'll put that in a second. And this is the one I did with them in it. I love this so much with them sewn in. And I don't know if you could see in the sped up footage, but I was worried that my um, string might come out from here, especially with them playing with it. So I went over my threads with just a little bit of glossy accents to kind of lock them in. And then I let them dry overnight and they've done, they've, it's done really well to do that. You can't see them and the stitches aren't going to unravel. Okay, so let's decide where we're putting it. Um, not on page one. 
I kind of want it back in the book a bit. Let's put it about here. I think that's a good spot for it. That gives them some extra spaces here to fill in and kind of gives them some ideas for things to do. Let's take these pages, and I think what I'll do with them is sprinkle them throughout. So I'll put one here, one here, and then back to the very back, we'll add one more. And that way they'll understand they've got spots to add. All right, for binding it, you could use ribbon. I actually had a subscriber comment that when she does them, she actually adds an extra hole and does three ribbons. I don't want to do ribbon on this one because I want the girls to be able to take this apart and put it back together very easy. And I think these will be easier for them. If nothing else, they won't have to have a bead threader to thread the pages through or anything like that. They'll just be able to put these in, you know, even if they put them in one at a time and they don't try to do what I'm trying to do here. But this will be easier for them to just play with this album. So think about your recipient when you're going to bind them. Another thing you can do if you're sending this to somebody who might not understand that there's ribbon or even these, put it into a three ring binder. There's nothing saying you couldn't put it into one of the little album binders, which would be super, super cute to do that. Um, and give it that. Let's do a walkthrough. All right. I love how my little charm came out. If you couldn't tell in the video that we did, this is one of those grommets that works with your crocodile. I just put it in there to a little extra support. Probably didn't need it. And the reason is these are just hole punched as well, like inside of there. So it was the same thing that I added. But when I was looking, if you wanted to, you could add grommets here if you wanted them to be more sturdy too. So I got a photo there cutesies here. This actually came from a card one of you guys sent me and I thought it was so cute and the girls love dogs so I thought that'd be cute to add there. Extra pockets they can put anything they want in. This is that extra sleeve we're sending. Here's photos, more photos, um, another extra sleeve, the girly girls, and then our sewn page which is one of my favorite pages. I think they'll like this, especially seeing themselves in the little cutouts. So cute. Remember how I told you I had to find a picture of daddy? There he is. I got him in there, so it's not just the girls. And then we have another sweetheart there. Then when we flip the page, we have more of them. An extra page here, and then their flip page. And also the little pullout there. I love how this turned out. I could keep playing with this and keep adding, but I want them to get to, and I need to get it into the mail before the fall is over with. You know what I'm saying? They need to have this to look forward to filling out. So that is our little plastic photo sleeve album where you don't even need a real album. You just need a couple of these little hooks. You could tie ribbons on these hooks too. That's something that Brenda does when she does like her little chipboard albums. But again, I want the girls to be able to get in easy and get out easy and not have to do that. Um, love this little guy. I hope you noticed in the video these little um, shanks. If you purchase these little charms and they're flat backed, and this works with anything you've got that's flat, back, flat backed, these little shanks can be glued on, and I just use my fabric tack. I let it dry overnight, and it was perfect. All right, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this album. I want to do more of these. I've got more ideas for them. I want to play with tassel making, too. I'm very new to tassel making. I've just been kind of teaching myself. I learned a lot with this one, things I would do different next time. So if you'd like to see that, maybe I can do a video on tassel making. That would be kind of fun, too. All right, you guys, thanks so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a big thumbs up or Vinny it if you know you know. Share what you're making with us over on our Facebook group at Meme Made It and So Did I and on our customer gallery at MeMeMadeIt.com. Till next time, bye now.